Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to model some buildings in Blender, and then we're going to apply freestyle lines to them so we have a cartoon line look. In the next video, I'll show you how to color those by doing UV unwrapping and then some texture painting. I know in my previous video I said I was going to put the buildings in here by drawing them in grease pencil, but I decided this actually made more sense and it'll show you how to get a 2D look while using 3D objects, which are a lot more versatile than just drawing because you can make changes easily and things like that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. I'm really trying to grow the channel and let's get started. So here I am in the same scene that I ended the last video with. The only thing about it is I did move Batman to the right because I'm going to put the buildings to the left. And I don't want them really overlapping his silhouette. So that's why he's moved. And I also wanted to point out that over here on the right, I have a collection that includes my background, Batman, the clouds, and the moon. And then I have a camera collection. I want to add another collection because I want to do the buildings in a collection of their own so that way I can just turn off everything else while I work on them. So I'm going to right click here in the outliner and click new collection. I'm going to double click there and type in the word buildings. And then I'm going to go up here where this filter is and I'm going to turn on this selectable filter and that way I can turn off anything I don't want selected on a collection level. So everything in that collection I can easily just turn on and off. I can make it unselectable if I want to. Okay, so I'm currently in object mode and I am going to turn this collection with Batman in it off for the moment. And if I render it, they'll still be there because I still have the camera on. But for now, I'm gonna leave it off in the viewport. So now I'm gonna transition out of the 2D animation mode and up here where my viewport shading is, I'm gonna change it from render to solid. And then at the top, I'm gonna click on this plus icon and go to general and then go to layout. So now I'm in your basic Blender viewport layout. So you can see my 3D cursor is currently in the center of the world, which is where I wanted it. If it's not, like if I click here and I move it over here, I can hit shift S and choose cursor to world origin and now it's there. And the reason I want it there is because when I add an object, it's going to add it wherever the 3D cursor is. And I want the object at the center of the world because when I make changes to increments and things like that, it's just easier if everything's centered. So I'm going to hit Shift A on my keyboard to bring up my ad menu. I'm going to hover over Mesh and hit Cube. Now I'm going to go back here to my 2D animation view and hit zero on my numpad. Now I'm framed. So I kind of got an idea of how big this should be. So I'm going to hit S to scale and hit Z to constrain to the Z axis. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to G to grab it and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. I'm going to pull it down. Actually, I'm going to hit S and Z again to bring it up a little bit more. Now I'm going to scroll out with middle mouse button and I'm going to go to edit mode by hitting tab. I'm going to go back to my layout mode because I just like the look of it better. So now in edit mode, you can see at the top left, I'm currently in points mode. I want to change the face mode by clicking there. Now I want to click out in the viewport to deselect everything. Then I'm going to go back and click on the top cube. So with that selected, I'm going to hit E on the keyboard to create an extrusion. And as soon as I click E, I'm going to click back in the viewport because I don't want to move this just yet. So I hit E and then click. Now you can't see it, but I've extruded that. So I've hit S to scale it. You can see I'm bringing that in now. So I'm going to go back to my 2D animation view and hit zero on my numpad. I'm going to hit E to extrude it again. I'm going to left click in the viewport to finalize that. You can see what that looks like. So I'm going to zero again. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to go back to layout mode. I want to put some edges on this. And I've got a idea of what I want this to look like based on some reference material that I've seen. So I'm going to click back into edit mode and I want to choose the edge mode by clicking that up here. Then I'll hit control R on my keyboard to bring up my loop cut mode. You can also choose that over here. So when you're cutting loops, if you hover over your mesh, it'll show it in the center of whatever direction you're hovering. 
So if you click once, you can then move it, and then click again, it finalizes it. Then you'll see a menu show up at your bottom left that you can then make additional changes. So I'll undo this, and I'll hover over it again, and I'll click once, and then click again without moving my mouse. And that's going to set it in the center of this side. So with that done, and my pop-up menu is available now, I'm going to left click on that to add some loops. So I've got 12 here. And I'll left click again to finalize those. I'm going to control R again and do the same thing here. I'm just going to let it center it, click, click again. Then I'm going to type in 12. Left click to finalize it. Okay, so I need a couple more loops. So I hit Control R again. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to drag it up to where I want it. And that looks good, and left click. And I don't need the menu, so I can just left click again to get rid of it. Hit Control R again. Bring that down to here, and that looks about right. Left click. Do one more here. and do one at the bottom. So the next thing I want to do is cut some more loops vertically. So I'm going to hit Control R, click in here, click again, and then I want to change this to 6. Control R again, click in the mesh, click again, and I want to change this to 12, hit Enter, click in the viewport, so next I want to click on the selection tool and go to the box select. And I want to select all of these in the center, but I want to leave the outside line available. I'm going to hit E, bring my mouse back a little bit, left click, and then I get the box at the bottom left. I want to change this to minus 0 0.07. Click in the viewport to finalize it, and I'm going to do the same thing for all the other sides. That way I know they'll be even. Now two sides we won't see in the final, but since I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Now here I'm missing two of those blocks. So if you hold shift and drag, I can select those. So before we model our second building, I can go ahead and add the freestyle lines to this so you can see what it looks like. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go to edge mode by clicking that up here. I'm going to go to select up here and go down select sharp edges. Now you can see it's selected everything I need, or you'll know what I mean when I add the freestyle lines. But see, I've got just the edges, which is exactly what I want. So to add the freestyle lines, right click in the viewport and say mark freestyle edges and they'll turn green. Okay, now I need all of the lines inside what will be the windows. So with box select still selected, I wanna left click and drag here. You see I didn't get all of those because you have to drag past them, but that's gonna be hard to do with the way it is. So I'm gonna to go to select, select linked, and select linked flat faces. You see how that grabbed all those? I'm going to go to right click, mark freestyle. So now I've got all those. So let me do one more and then I'll speed all this up. So I can just select a couple like that. And I go to select, select linked, select linked flat faces. And that's got them for me. Right click, mark freestyle edges. Now they're green. So I'm going to do the other three sides and speed it up, and then I'll be right back. So to enable freestyle, I'm going to click on the Render Properties here in the Properties window. I'm going to scroll down here to where it says Freestyle and click on that. And I won't make any changes here. Next, I'm going to go to Layer Properties, click on that, and I'm going to close these. You can see we have a Freestyle section. So this determines how the lines are shown and what lines are shown. 
So I want to scroll all the way down to where it says Edge Type. Now since I've marked these, I don't need anything else because they will show the lines based on a number of different options such as silhouette, crease, border, contour. There's several you can look at. But since I've marked those, I don't need Blender to decide for me. I've decided so I can unclick all of these except Edge Mark. Now I'm going to go back to 2D view and then I'm going to turn on Batman. Now I'm going to click on Render. So I'm going to go to Render, Render Image. Now you can see why I did that. I've got all of these windows and individual panes just by doing that. And if I go to Object Mode, click on that, hit G and X, and hit Render Image again, now you can see how that looks like in perspective. Now you see right now the back is being cut off. That's because it's intersecting with the clouds. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to middle mouse button around so you can see that. So it's getting cut off. So to fix that, I'm going to select it and the background in object mode. And I want to make sure I've got the background, the clouds, the moon, and the cube. And I'll hit G to bring that backwards. And I'll hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis. So now that the building is behind Batman, I'm going to click in the viewport to unselect everything. Then I'll click to grab the background, the clouds, and the moon. And hit G again and Y to constrain it. And I'll bring it back further. I'm going to hit zero on my numpad to come back into camera view. Now you can see the cloud and the moon are too small for the viewport. So now that I've got them still selected, I'm going to hit S to scale them and bring them up. Okay, now if I hit render in the viewport, we can see what that looks like. So the building also is too small now, so I'm going to click it, hit S, and scale it up, and then G to grab it, Z to constrain it, and I'm going to bring it down so the moon is just peeking out from above it. So now I hit render again. You can see what that looks like. So I add a material to it just so we can see it, but in the next video I'll show you how to actually paint on this to give it a cartoon look. So I'm going to double click on the cube in the outliner and change that to building one. And down the materials tab, I'll click on that, I'm going to click new. And we'll change the base color to just a gray. And then we'll zero out everything else because I don't need that. And we'll hit render again. And again, in the next video, I'll show you how to create, you know, a gradient on the lights and how to light the building a little bit just through texture painting. So I'll close out the render. Okay, I'm going to create the second building and I'll make this design a little different than the last one. So I'm going to go back to layout mode and I'm going to turn off this collection to hide everything. And I've still got my other building. Now you can see the 3D cursor is not in the center of the world. So I'm going to hit Shift S and choose Cursor to World Origin. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm in Object Mode. Hit my Add Menu, Mesh, Cube. I'm going to hit Zero on my numpad to come into Camera View. I'm going to hit Scale to bring it in a little bit. I'm going to hit Scale again and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to make this one slightly smaller than the other one. So I'm going to hit G to grab it and Z to constrain it to the Z axis and bring it down. I'm going to scroll out a little bit because I want them to be side by side. If I hit 7 on my numpad, I can go into overhead view or top view. G to grab it. I'm going to bring it over to about right here. S to scale it up just a little bit. Zero again to go to my camera view. I'm going to S, Z to scale it again. I'm going to bring it up a little more and then G to grab it and Z to bring it down. Okay, in edit mode, I'm going to click on face mode, select that top face. So I'm going to hit E and then click in the viewport and click again. And I'm going to hit S to scale that out a little bit. E again to bring that up just a little. Then I'm going to click E and then click in the viewport. Then I'm going to hit S to scale that in a little bit. E again to bring that up. 
Then we hit E and click in the viewport. Then we hit S to scale that out. Then I E to extrude that up. Click in the viewport. Okay. Now I hit zero on my numpad to come into camera view. And this one I'll make some thin windows. So I'm gonna hit Control R to go to loop cut. Center it there, click, and then click. And then I want to bring out the number of cuts to 18. Can okay, I control R again? Create a loop. I'm going to click in the model and then drag up and put a loop cut there. Click to finalize it. I'm going to hit control R again. Click, drag, put a loop cut there. I'm going to change my selection mode to the select circle. And you see I've got a really small radius. You can change that up here. Now I'm going to change the face mode and I'm going to click every other face. Then I'm going to E to extrude, bring that back just a little. I left click to finalize it. Now I'm going to change the edge mode. Go to select, select sharp edges. And that gave me all the edges I need. So I'm going to right click and go to mark freestyle edges. Now I'm going to render this. I'm going to close out of the render. I want to go to object mode, left click, grab it, and click on X to constrain it. And I'm going to bring it over closer to this building. And I'm going to click them both, hit G to grab them, X to constrain them. And I'm going to bring that one out of view a little bit because I want just a little bit of this side showing. And let me render that. Okay, I'm going to select the second building, hit G, and then Z, and I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So I want to see the edge of this building behind it. I'm going to double click on the outliner and change that to building 2. I'll render that. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to click on the material tab, click new, and I'm going to change the base color of that one to a gray, but just slightly lighter than the other. Then we'll zero out all these. Hit render. Okay, I think that gives me what I need. So in the next video I'll show you how to UV unwrap these which is fairly painless. I know a lot of people don't like UV wrapping but on simple objects like this it isn't a big deal. And then I will show you how to paint in some lines on the windows so it looks like a reflection and some gradients on the windows to give it a little illumination and then we'll change up some of the other colors on the other parts of the building. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.